So we've seen PSK and FSK, and now we're going on to QAM, Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, to examine the signal space representation and how we can find the uh, probability of error performance uh, using signal space. So this is covered again in the decision regions for coherent detection in our textbook SCLAR. QAM can have an amazing number of instantiations. There's all kinds of uh, two-dimensional geometries that we can use uh, for QAM modulation. So what I'm going to be showing you today are some solutions for the typical rectangular solution. However, uh, what you'll see on some of the exam questions is applying the same techniques to some other geometries uh, we see for QAM. And you know, the technique that I'm using for rectangular, you can just as easily apply to any of these other arbitrary uh, forms uh, so that you can, for uh, any QAM uh, modulation, find a good expression for the probability of error coming from this approximation due to the union bound. So when we're working with QAM, like one of the most challenging parts is actually just getting a good representation for the energy, doing the correct normalization. So we're going to have to work on finding the energy, the average energy per symbol, because this is a very important um, uh, a parameter in the approximation coming from the um, union bound. So for QAM, first thing we know is that the energy varies from one symbol to another. It's very rare that we would have, uh, in fact, it's only QPSK, which is a version of rectangular QAM that has equal uh, energy. So for instance, look at this. We have two concentric rings with uh, different points along each one of the rings. It's like two PSKs, sort of. Uh, but anyway, in one of the rings, all the energy is the same, but it's different from the energy on the other ring. Uh, here is a hexagonal uh, geometry, and of course there are some at the same distance, but there are others, so there are multiple distances. So it's very important that we, when we talk about the energy per symbol, there's not just one number like we saw in FSK or in uh, MPSK, but now the energy varies, and so it really is important to do this um, finding the average energy per symbol. And of course, it's very straightforward. We take 1 over m and we sum over the energy of each one of the individual symbols. So getting the right average energy per signal, uh, symbol is important to put it in the equation, but it's like also very important in order to find the minimal distance because the minimal distance to be useful must be written in terms of uh, uh, must be a function of the average energy per symbol. So this really distinguishes between what I call signal space and what I call IQ space. Because when we look at strange geometries for QAM, uh, it, sometimes we want to just have an easy set of coordinates that allows us to do the geometry uh, to compare distances between different points. So in that case, what I would do is create something I call IQ space, and it has very simple coordinates, and it's just purely inspired by the geometry, anything to make my, my trigonometry easier uh, to execute. But this is not good for finding the minimal distance. It's trickier, it's possible, but it's just uh, prone to errors. So what we prefer to do is to look in signal space, which is essentially the IQ space, but with the correct normalization. In the normalization, it just ensures that all distances are referenced to the average energy per symbol, and that when I add everything up and calculate what is the actual average energy, voila, I do get this average energy per symbol. And so I'll be taking you through uh, the normalization between the IQ space and the signal space, because really it's the only difference between these two spaces. So let's take a very simple example of QPSK. Uh, QPSK, uh, we have the coordinates here in terms of the uh, energy per symbol. And this is uh, plus and minus uh, the square root of ES over 2 for both the x and the y coordinates in this case. Uh, we could have rotated it, but this is a rotation we're using for this example. And the minimum distance is, of course, between these two points. And we can calculate it, and it's, uh, you know, a square root of ES um, over 2 plus the square root of ES over 2. Uh, so the 2, uh, I move into the square root, and I get 2 times, the square root of 2 times is the square root of ES. I could also write that in terms of EB. So I can say that the, uh, it's uh, m equal 4, and so it's log 2 of 4 is 2. So 
the energy per symbol is just two times the energy per bit. So the minimum distance I can write in terms of ES uh, as the square root of 2ES or in terms of EB and two times square root of EB. And that is because I started out in signal space. These coordinates were correctly applied. They are a function of ES. And if I uh, add up the average energy for each one of these, I would indeed get ES. So ES is correctly used in this constellation. Suppose that I wanted to have simple coordinates. The IQ space, well, I would just choose plus and minus one. They're much easier to work with. Uh, and uh, the difference between this space, which is just a function of numbers, there's no description of ES, and this space is that this is normalized so that the distance from the origin to a point represents the energy of the symbol. And the symbol ES represents the energy of uh, the average symbol energy as I average over the distance from the origin. So in this case, signal space, normalization such that the distance, the length of a vector is, is related to the energy per symbol. Here the length of the vector has nothing to do with energy. There's no, no mention of energy. So if I want to go from IQ space to signal space, all I have to do is renormalize my coordinates. So I start off with these simple coordinates. I do my, my, my trigonometry to find out you know, where is the minimum distance. But Ultimately, when I want to get d min, I've got to go from this IQ space into the um, uh, signal space. So I have a very simple equation here that gives me this conversion with the correct normalization. Here are, on this side of the equation, are the coordinates in signal space. Over here are the coordinates in IQ space. So here's the plus and minus 1. And what I'd like to come out with here is something that has a square root of ES in it. So what I do is I take the square root of m times ES divided by, uh, here I have the sum over the squares of all the coordinates for the uh, different symbols. And uh, it's very clear that I'm going to get something that's a function of ES when I'm done. And it's really just a multiplicative factor, just a normalization that goes from one space uh, to the other. So let's take the example of a square quam. In this case, we'll be looking at 16 quam. So uh, here is my general equation for doing the conversion. And here is the uh, geometry in signal space. So uh, let's look at the simple coordinates in IQ space. In IQ space, I'm going to choose plus and minus 1, like the QPSK one, and then plus and minus 3 uh, uh, for the other possibilities. So let's look at these first four. Those first four have coordinates that are plus and minus 1. So there's 1, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, and minus 1, minus 1. So four points. These coordinates, they're all at the same distance from the origin, and that distance is the square root of 2. Now, there are another um, collection of points uh, which have these coordinates of either plus and minus 3 with a plus and minus 1, uh, or plus and minus 1 with plus and minus 3, and all of these are also at the same distance from the origin. So they're at a distance of square root of 10. So in total, there are eight of these points at a distance of square root of 10. So that leaves four points in the far corners that we haven't included yet. Uh, those are coordinates of plus and minus 3 for both x and y. And these are also equidistant from the origin, and that distance is the square root of 18. So we have uh, now all the information we need to calculate this uh, sum at the bottom here to sum over the squares, which the sum over the squares is just the um, excuse me, the, uh, what we're calculating here is these distances. So that comes to 4 times, and of course it's the square root of 2, but squared because this is the distance squared. Uh, 4 times 2, 4 times 10, 4 times 10, and 4 times 18. So now we're going to have uh, the total uh, of the squared distance uh, for uh, these points. And we get some, we add them up and it comes up to 160. So now I put this inside my equation. I've got the 16 from the 16 quam, and I've got the 160 from uh, my calculation of the average uh, uh, square distance. So now I know that the coordinates in signal space are just the coordinates from IQ space, but multiplied by uh, this normalization factor, which simplifies to the square root of the symbol energy divided by 10. Now I can find the minimum distance, because the minimum distance is clearly uh, from the simple geometry. It's any one of these distances. But the easiest one to do and think about is uh, this one with coordinates of 
one one and minus one one, or you could pick any of them. But uh, the difference between these, well, now I know that the new coordinates, instead of being one one minus one and one, uh, it would be just the square root of es over 10 times each one of these coordinates. And therefore, with the correct coordinates in uh, signal space, I can directly see that the minimal distance would be uh, 2 times the square root of es over 10. So I now know the uh, minimal uh, distance that I can use in my expression for the probability of error. Remember, I could also convert from es to eb that's just based on uh, log 2m. And so if I wanted, I could say that es would be equal to 4 times eb. Uh, either, represent, either representation is fine for signal space, either ES or EB, uh, but one or the other. So the next step, of course, in, in coming up with an estimate for the probability of error is to count the number of pairs at the minimal distance. So in this case for square quam, there's a lot of symmetry, makes it easy to do the calculation. I can look at any single row, and in each row I can see that there are three pairs at the minimum distance. If I look at any column, I can see that there are three pairs uh, in each one of the columns. Of course, there are four columns and four rows, so I can come up with the uh, total number of pairs, there being 24 pairs that are at this minimal uh, distance. And that's because of the uh, structure of the square quam. So I have everything I need now. I take my union bound, I have k and I've got d min, and I plug them in, and I get 2 times 24, of course, m is 16. I'm going to use ES, uh, and so I'm moving the 2 inside of the square root, and it comes out to this expression. It's 3 multiplied by the Q function, and the argument of the Q function is the square root of ES over 5 and 0. So now I have an expression for 16 quam. Uh, I could also write this in terms of EB, either EB or ES. Now, there's a lot of symmetry in the square quam, and so I can actually generalize these results and say, let m be any l squared. And in this case, you can come up with uh, uh, the simple coordinates in IQ space would be plus and minus 1, plus and minus 3, plus and minus 5, plus and minus 7, etc. Um, as long as l is an even uh, number. So the coordinates in signal space you can you know look at the math, it's not difficult to find, uh, would have this expression. So it would be a function of the uh, L squared, which is equal to M. Uh, and so here we have the dependence on ES. So this is from the general equation uh, applied to square quam for an arbitrary size. So the minimal distance in this case, we can go back and you know put in one and one here and then uh, get two coordinates and figure out their distance and it comes out to just uh, two times this normalization factor for this square quam uh, case. And we can simplify the expression and we get that it's two times uh, the square root of 2eb log 2 of l divided by uh, l squared minus 1. So you know, you're going to see this expression in terms of l, you're going to see it in terms of m, uh, depending on which reference book you're looking at. So. From the d min, uh, we also need the number of pairs at the minimal distance. Uh, again, it's easy to calculate. We're doing this idea of a number of rows, number of columns. It comes up that there are a total of 2L times L minus 1 pairs of symbols at the minimum distance. So with this value for k and for the value of d min, we can come up with an estimate for the probability of error for an arbitrary size of square quam. And so we have a multiplicative factor, 1 minus 1 over the square root of m, and then the q function with an argument which goes as log 2m over m minus 1 times eb over n0. You'll see that I made a special case to try and isolate eb over n0. That's because when we go to compare performance among different uh, modulation formats, they'll all have an eb over n0. And so what's really important is how that appears in the argument of the q function. Again, here I used m, in the previous case I used l, and you'll see them uh, both ways in, in different uh, references. So we also talked about a normalized minimum distance as being a way to compare. So I said uh, previously that I was isolating the eb over n0, and another way to do that is to by using this normalized version. So in the case, uh, the general equation is, of course, given up here. It's uh, capital D min divided by the square root of 2eb. And by uh, doing this normalization, I sort of uh, get out what's common between the 
uh, different modulation formats, and I isolate on what's different. And so in this case, for square cam, uh, the d min uh, normalize comes up to be the square root of 3 log 2m divided by uh, m minus 1. And so if I wanted to put the probability of error expression in terms of this normalized distance, I get um, uh, it's just to take the d min times the square root of eb over n0. So this is another way of writing it uh, with a different normalization. Just be very careful because when you look at this d min normalized, we've lost the eb and es. That's because, you know, we divided by it. We did it on purpose. But don't confuse this with the iq coordinates, which don't have an es or an eb, because those iq coordinates are just arbitrary. They're just anything that makes the geometry look simple. But this d min, which is dimensionless, which does not have uh, the energy in it, is still related to the uh, signal space, not to the IQ space. So it has a much more uh, meaning to it. So from the um, results now, we have the approximation for square quam, which we developed coming from the Union Brown. Square quam is special. There's actually a way of finding an exact expression for the probability of error. And that exact expression um, uh, actually, you can find in our reference of digital communications uh, from uh, Proacus, and we see that uh, it actually uh, is the same in the case of square. So because of the symmetry, everything uh, sort of uh, works out very well.